welcome. I'm so thrilled to be here with you guys for another pick a card. For all of my regulars, I know it's been a minute since I posted a reading for you, but I'm so thrilled to be back. Things have just been crazy, but I've got a whole series of readings that are coming out for you. And if this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Odessa. I'm the Mystic Intuitive Healer, and I deliver messages through the cards that help you to awaken, heal, align, and grow. So in today's reading, I'm going to be looking at the connection between you and your partner, and I'm going to be revealing to you exactly how they're feeling about you right now. So you have three piles to select from. Pile number one has the purple flowers that I picked from my garden this morning, as well as the orange calcite crystal. Then pile number two has the red floral and the strawberry calcite crystal. Pile number three has the purple flowers and the clear quartz point. So I'm gonna give you guys a close up of the items and the cards so you can meditate and select your pile. Just choose the pile that you're most drawn to. This is a collective reading, so not all of the messages are gonna be meant for you. So just keep that in mind as you're listening to the messages that come forward. This is most attuned with your energy right now. And if you would like to have a personal reading where you learn information about your specific circumstances, I do do personal and private readings and you can find out more information about that on my website, odessamall.com. And you can always feel free to reach out, email me or message me here in the comments section and I would be happy to answer any of your questions. So if you want to hold on a minute, you'll be able to see the close up and you can select your pile and I will see you at your reading. Hi, pile number one, welcome back. So you picked the purple flowers and the orange calcite. I'm just gonna set those aside. They might come up in the reading. We'll see what the cards say. And for all of you who missed the intro, this reading is all about the relationship between you and your person. I'm gonna be revealing to you how they feel about you. Just keep in mind that this is a general reading. So you're guided to your pile through your intuition and I'm gonna be reading the general energy of your connection. But there will be a mix of different messages. Some will be meant for you and they will resonate. You can take that on. Other messages will not click for you at all. Just leave that behind. That's probably meant for somebody else. If you want a really detailed reading that's very specific to your own situation, I highly recommend getting a personal reading done. I do do personal readings. You can find out more information about that on my website, odessamall.com. Okay, so let's get into these cards. So these cards are revealing how your person feels about you. So the first card he received is the Sea of Mintonka, seeing potential, bringing the unconscious to light. So the overall sense that I get from this card is that you are pulling forward emotions in them that might have been buried. They obviously see some potential in the connection. I'm not entirely sure how connected the two of you are at this particular point in time. Some of you might be in a new connection. You're just getting to know each other. But this might be a situation where the two of you have been part of each other's journey for a while and you're still surprising them. Um, there seems to be a really strong emotional bond and maybe something that they don't necessarily completely understand yet. Reciprocity, I want to have equal give and take. So they really want to give back to you. They want you to be able to contribute as much to the relationship as themselves. Um, this is interesting. I'm getting really mixed messages from this card though. So I do want to clarify that. We'll just go through the rest of the cards first. Heartbroken, deeply hurt, sad, separation, breakup, feeling lost, grieving, mourning. So they might have had a breakup with you. There might have been some sort of separation that took place or is currently taking place. This might also be just feeling really confused about the relationship. Sometimes people 
can have their wounds and triggers come forward even in a positive connection. You know, you meet someone, you like them, and all of a sudden, all of the things that you didn't face in your previous relationship starts to bubble up to the surface and it might not have anything to do with the other person. You're not even talking to them about it, but you're worried that your heart is gonna get broken. You're worried that they're not gonna like you, that they're gonna go a different direction and you're gonna be left all alone. So it's possible that they are deeply hurt and it's related to their own personal journey or of course, there's always the possibility that something has transpired between the two of you and they're still overcoming their feelings. The spy master, knowledge, distrust. This person is definitely watching you. They're trying to find out information about you. There is this feeling that they can't necessarily trust their feelings. It's what's coming forward. There's this raven on the card. The ravens in a lot of um, mythology are connected to the shadow realms and they are connected to messengers. So it's possible that they're trying to find out information about you that puts you in a bad light or maybe there is some secrecy that's been going on in the connection and they are trying to figure out what's been happening. But it's also possible that they feel like the connection is too good to be true and this can't possibly be real and they are trying to figure you out so that they can avoid this heartache. There's like this sense that there's a lot of passion and attraction towards you with fire on this card and, and you seem to be unlocking something in them that they feel really uncomfortable with. Um, but they also might be trying to find out your secrets. They're trying to unlock you. Then Aphrodite, romantic love. So they see you as extremely attractive. They feel drawn to you. There seems to be a strong romantic connection between the two of you. And of course, you guys might be asking about people that you don't necessarily have a romantic connection with. Um... Maybe this is something that you're starting to feel or maybe you feel like they have that feeling towards you and this is definitely confirming that. Like they definitely want to pursue something that is more romantic with you. Okay, Rosemary, ancient memory, card number three. This is card number two. So the heartbreak for some of you might have something to do with a third party situation. This might not necessarily be infidelity. Third party situations can be choosing, you know, other um, aspects of their life over the connection with you. It can be, you know, being torn between work and the connection with you or family and the connection with you or even their own time being single, not wanting to you know, give anything up, being fearful of being connected to someone on a really deep level. But the ancient memory is also making me think that they feel so drawn to you. There's this sense that, you know, you've known each other before. Maybe you did know each other in the past. Like maybe this is a reconnection or this is an on off situation or there's just something spiritual about your connection. You feel like you've known each other from like a past life. And, and regardless of how you feel about our, you know, spiritual existence, it might just feel very familiar to you being in this connection. Maybe you have a lot in common. Maybe you have common ancestry, like your families came from the same country or they, you have the same religious background or cultural practices. But Rosemary, not only is it a herb that's for seasoning, but it's often used for cleansing. So there again is this feeling of I'm trying to protect my heart because I'm afraid in some way. So Rosemary and then the eight of mirrors or the eight of swords in your head. So you might be in your head, you might be overthinking the connection, you might be overwhelmed by this and they're picking up on, on that energy from you. 
they might be completely overwhelmed. Like there's this strong sense of them being really drawn towards you, wanting to be with you. There might be some sort of difference between the two of you. When I look at the reciprocity card and the two individuals that are holding hands are different ethnicities. So there might be like you come from different walks of life. There's obviously a lot that's in common, but there seems to be a lot that's different as well. And that might be freaking them out. I mean, the overall sense I get is that it's the differences that's freaking them out, but it's also the similarities that are freaking them out. There seems to be like some sort of, you know, growth that's going to be happening from this connection. And, you know, sometimes we get really triggered in those moments. But I'm going to clarify these cards because I think we really need to dive in a lot deeper to really understand what's going on. So can I get a card for the Eight of Swords? Three cards have come out. Closure, talent, and compassion. Okay, so that is really interesting. So there might have been an ending to the relationship, like the heartbroken card is sort of alluding to. There's been some sort of breakup and they're having trouble getting closure. They're feeling very drawn to you. There's this sense of like this woman is dancing in front of the moon. This man is holding the earth. Um, there's this sense of circling around each other, um, being in each other's orbit, being drawn, wanting to give back to each other and not necessarily being able to do that, that there is still like a closed door that maybe the two of you, the timing isn't quite right. The two of you can't come together at this particular point in time for some reason. Um, let's get some cards on the Spy Master. What can you tell me about the Spy Master? Okay. Oh yeah. Back and forth and joyous fun. So they're really in their head. This is the card number five, which the number five often talks about conflict, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's like physical conflict. Like the two of you are literally arguing with each other. It can be that mental back and forth. There feels to be like they're drawn to you. They have fun with you, but like maybe they're afraid that it's an illusion or maybe it's these differences. Like they had an idea of who they were going to be and what their partner would be like in their mind. And they're having a lot of trouble divorcing themselves from that fantasy. Like the moon is on this card. It's an illusion. Like sometimes you can have this vision in your mind of what your future partner will be like. And then when the right person steps into your life, they don't fit that mold. And it's because we're often not going deep enough. We're not looking at what we really need. We're looking at superficial things. So they might have been thinking about what kind of job you would have, what you would look like, you know, what your social network would be like. And they weren't really looking at who they were, where their sort of like weaknesses were and what kind of partner they would need to sort of help them to blossom and grow, to bring out the very best in them. Like that's truly what we're supposed to be seeking when it comes to relationships, looking for someone who unconditionally loves you. They see all aspects of you, not just the parts that we want the world to see, the parts that we're not so happy with, the parts that we shy away from. They see that, they accept that, and they help us to get comfortable with it. And then that's our role as well, to deliver to them as well. And there is this sense that they they haven't really come into balance. This particular card is card number seven. Seven is a lucky number, and it's also a number that coincides with the um, number of chakras that we have, the primary chakras, as well as the colors in the rainbow. So it's talking about getting into balance on a vibrational level, um, really being able to wholeheartedly 
be present and accepting of who we are and what's going on in our life. This person is going to have to transform to a certain degree to really be able to have a partnership with anyone, not just you, because they're still seemingly having trouble accepting the fact that other people will be different from them and that differences do not mean that there is something wrong with the relationship and an unknown does not mean that there is going to be disaster or that that automatically they have to be placed in an energy of fear this person seems to have some need for control but we're going to get more cards and find out a little bit more can you tell me about the heartbroken card? Clarification on the heartbroken card. Okay, so three cards have come out. The organization card, practicality and speculation. Yeah, so they had all of these ideas in their head about what was practical in their life. How am I gonna form this solid foundation? There is the crab, which connects with Cancer, Cancer, Jupiter. There is a king and queen, um, number four, which is talking about solid foundations. So Cancer is an energy that is connected to the emotions because it's a water sign, very intuitive, can see through facades. Jupiter is about expansion and this can also be alluding to their vision of what like a power couple would be. Um, but they can be very guarded, this energy of cancer, guarded and they're protecting like their soft, squishy inside. Um, but I think that that need to have such a tight hold on the manifestation of their vision is actually keeping them from blossoming and growing because you know you plant the seeds you have an idea of what you want and then you have to learn to let go to a certain degree and and be open-minded and and tr see how something is going to unfold and how that feels for you without you know there's this sense of like having a checklist in their mind and it's like every single time you don't measure up to whatever is on that checklist they are like putting an x next to your name and it's really unfair to you because i think that they're they don't realize how judgmental and sort of immature that is um they think that they're being very practical they think they're being very organized um, but they're, they're creating heavy burdens for other people. Like they're trying to get the harvest and everyone else has to do the hard work. And what I mean by that is like, here's my bar. Now, can you like jump through these hoops and like, you know, do all these tricks, impress me, make sure that I, I am comfortable choosing you. It's like the grass is always greener. If I pick you, it, am I really letting my true soul mate go? And it's like this, they're not allowing themselves to be present in the moment. They're, both of these cards are 10, which is the end of a cycle, but oftentimes the 10 energy can bring about a lot of difficult work. And we've got Sagittarius on both of these cards. Sorry, no, Capricorn, clarification. Capricorn, as well as Mercury and the moon. So they're really in their head. They're overthinking things. There's a lot of illusion here. And Capricorn can be very rigid. It's like so practical. It can be very wounding. So you are probably in either a state of shock, confusion, and or heartbreak. Um, or you are just completely confused about what's going on because they seem to be embodying that energy. Okay, so let's get some more cards about what your person is feeling about you. Um, can you clarify the ancient memory? Okay. So, okay. Judgment has come forward as well as the chariot. So judgment is talking about a change of perspective. It's also a rebirth card. 
Um, it's talking about getting to a place where you understand yourself on a deeper level. And the chariot can be a card of success. It can be talking about forward momentum. And it can be talking about balance. I really want to clarify these cards, though, because this can be a positive. This could be a negative it all depends on what actions they're going to take. So clarify the judgment card, please. Okay, nine of pentacles. So they're definitely learning a lot from this experience. They are going to be transforming so that they are more authentically showing up in their lives as the version of them that will bring them the most benefit. But this nine of pentacles can be a very solitary energy as well. Like in, in the long run, it's a benefit to whoever they're with, but this is not a partner card. This is a card that talks about, I'm okay on my own. I'm figuring out how to meet all of my own needs. And now I'm understanding that there are things that I have to do for myself before I'm going to be able to be a good partner for another, before I can give that unconditional love and tr like transform into the energy of the Ten of Pentacles, which can be talking about long-term partnerships families where you're really building and growing something together clarify the chariot please and the chariot is clarified by the three of pentacles and the knave of wands so this is a person that i think is likely going to be moving forward but possibly towards their own desires and passions they might be moving more towards friendships, work relationships, or dating other people, um, there's a good chance that they are going to be pulling away from you and a committed connection, um, at least in the short term. Uh, can I get some more guidance on how this person feels about pile number one? man. This person's really confused. So the enthusiasm card has come out. They really are enthusiastic about you. They really like you. There's this magnetism, this energy that you bring to the table. Like you are illuminated, you shine and glow in a different way than they've possibly experienced with other partners. Optimism. And it's interesting because this is Sagittarius and there is the sun on the enthusiasm card and the moon on this card. And they're both card number nine. So there's this like opposites attract kind of energy. It's possible that you're in um, a union with someone who is of the opposite sex because the moon can be the divine feminine. The sun can be the divine masculine. Um optimism like they feel good about the relationship I don't know why they are so rigid about everything it's like you got the order card as well like they're so and there's Virgo and the moon on this card like they're just very rigid about what their life should be like and I think that they might be falling for the trap of wanting to receive the approval of other people like worried that other people are not going to understand your connection or maybe you know their friends or family are going to judge you or they feel like they're going to be judged by your community and like there's the differences are blinding them like they're just looking at that and you also receive the choice card and and they just feel like they don't know what is the right choice for them. And honestly, if this person doesn't know that like you are the one for them and they are not enthusiastically moving towards you, then they are not the right person for you. And ultimately, you would be in this state of confusion. You would be in this state of like depletion as well, right? Like you constantly trying to read their mind and figure out what they want. And then slowly it will erode your sense of self so that you end up changing little by little by little by little. And 
till you're no longer the same person. And it's not you that needs to change. It's this person recognizing that the, the, the matters of their heart and what they need on a personal level when it comes to relationships should only be guided by their own needs. Other people have different needs. And what the external world thinks should not be weighing this heavy on them. Like it shows that they don't have the confidence that I think that they think they do. They're being way too practical about this. Now it's possible that the connection is very young. Like they're unsure about the connection because they haven't known you for that long. And in that case, you might want to weigh things out a little or wait it out a little bit longer and weigh out your own options too. I, I, you'll have to like sort of compare what I'm talking about to your own personal situation. But let's get some advice for you about what you should do in this situation. What should pile? Okay. So you received the tower and the world. So the tower is talking about a shocking event, some sort of upheaval and major transition that's taking place in your life. And then the world is talking about the end of a cycle, a major cycle. It's talking about moving towards something that is more fulfilling towards you. And it also talks about graduation, learning a lot about yourself. So I think that for some of you, this has been very, very, very painful. And it might take a while for you to slowly move to a place where you are like aware of what gifts this gave you. Like, what did you learn about yourself? How are you going to show up in a relationship in a different way? Maybe this was like a real whirlwind romance too. Like maybe you're going to be learning that you know, passion and moving faster doesn't necessarily mean that the relationship is more stable or this person is more committed to you. Like that kind of energy can be very flighty and maybe moving slower, getting to know someone before you sort of like hand over your heart will be a better approach for you in the future. But I'm going to get some final words of guidance from Spirit about your connection with your person. Can I get one more card? Okay. So this, these are Oracle cards and they have angel numbers on them. So you might see these numbers going forward, or these might be numbers that you're already seeing. So zero two two zero act on your idea, realistic and practical approach, goals, divine timing, ambition, cooperation, discipline. You have the benefit of good fortune, and if you use your wise judgment, you can do anything. In this place, you can reach new heights. You should act on your potential when you see this pattern, since what you plant will grow. You're about to experience a spectacular ascent. So this might be a real opportunity for you to really go towards the things that you wanted to achieve in your life. Um, it, this could be talking about your own personal goals in career or your hobbies or your connections with your family and friends. And maybe you're learning a lot from this person in terms of being more disciplined, being more proactive, being more ordered in how you approach the successes in your life. And you're going to be able to take that forward and it's really going to serve you well. This could also be talking about being very practical when you're approaching the next connection or starting to take on some of this energy in this connection, like slowing yourself down, don't allowing your emotions to sort of guide you there are lots of different people that we can connect with throughout the course of your life. Lots of spiritual minds will talk about um, soulmate connections and they make it sound like there's only one perfect person out there for you and that could not be the furthest thing from the truth. You are constantly evolving, growing and changing and so is everyone else on the planet. So you might have certain like bonds with people that feel like it is a faded or destined connection, but it doesn't mean that they're the only person that you could ever find sustained love with. It just means that 
there is something that connects you to possibly in past life connections possibly there's already a certain dynamic that's going to unfold based on you know your personality and and sort of like some of the past influences that you brought in with you in this life so that is worthy like they they could be classified as soul family they're connected to you and and there's something there but it doesn't mean that they are supposed to be your spouse or they're going to be your forever person then the final card you received is 1122 great shift personal growth spiritual development and manifesting goals oneness connection and completion First, focus on the positive changes occurring due to your efforts. Then expand your horizon and permit yourself to try something new. So many positive shifts are in store for you. The world around you is changing in favor of your intentions. So make sure that you are okay with change because change is inevitable. Everything is in a constant state of flux hanging on to what you have right now and assuming that this is going to be in your life exactly as it is forever will just create a lot of anxiety for you and potential suffering if something starts to shift and change like the tower and if you can get comfortable with that and start focusing on what your deeper desires are and start going through a process of manifesting that's thoughts words and actions it's not just about like making like a vision board and thinking positively not only do you have to do those things and there's lots of different techniques you can use the ones i just mentioned you can use other techniques but it's not just about that it's also about you taking steps in the physical world, having conversations with others, gaining information about how you can approach your goals, having conversations with different love options, like really hearing them, not just hanging on to the things that are positive, but also being realistic and, and realizing that some of those red flags need to be accounted for. Like, it's not just that you can overcome them. In some cases, you can overcome them because everyone has free will. If the other person doesn't want to partner with you and work on those things, then there's nothing you can do to change them. The only thing you can do is choose yourself and be willing to say, I deserve to be able to have someone who is ready for this relationship, who is going to choose partnering with me. And that's when the right partners will start to enter your life. And I can tell you from personal experience that when a new chapter starts to start in your life, you enter this new phase, there'll be all kinds of tests that come in, people that come into your life and you think, wow, this person is so amazing. We have this strong connection and they just will flake on you or they will you know, be all in their head like this, or they will, you know, be hot and cold. And that's because they were never ready. It was a test to see, are you going to fall for all the traps of the past? Are you going to, you know, lean back into self-destructive behavior, choosing the other person over yourself, you know, feeling like your happiness is tied to someone else's decisions. And if you can let go of that, you won't have to face it as much, right? Like once you let go of it, you overcome the lesson. And then the players that you interact with, the people that come into your life will change to match what your new expectations are. So just keep that in mind. So that concludes your reading, pile number one. I hope that you enjoyed it. I would love to know your thoughts on this. You can leave me a comment. Of course, I love to hear from you guys. It's always nice to get your feedback. It makes me feel good knowing that you enjoyed the reading. It also helps with the channel growth. And as I mentioned before, I do personal reading. So if any of you guys are interested in working with me, um, you can check out my website. I do tarot readings, but I do lots of other things as well. So go to my website, odessamall.com and you can find out more information there. 
So I am sending you all so much love. I hope that you have a wonderful day or night and I look forward to seeing you in the next reading. Take care. Hi, pile number two, welcome back. So you picked the little red floral cutting and the strawberry calcite. So I'm gonna set these aside. These might come forward in your reading, but I'm gonna see what the cards say. And for those of you who missed the intro, this is a reading that's all about your connection with your person. And specifically, I'm gonna be looking at how they feel about you. And this is a reminder that this is a general reading. So some of the messages will be about you and your situation, and you'll know what's meant for you. And the things that don't resonate for you, that don't click, just leave it because it's likely a message meant for another person. I'm reading the general energy. I'm channeling information from spirit and it's your relationship with your own intuition that guides you to the messages that are meant for you. If you want to have a personal reading where all of the messages are about you and your questions and your circumstance, you can book a private reading with me. Uh, you just need to go to my website odessamall.com and you can find out more about my tarot readings and all of the other services that I offer. Okay, so let's get into these cards and find out what your person is thinking about you. So the first card you received is conversation. I want to call you and hear your voice. That's nice. So there might be some distance between you or it just, it might just be a situation where you guys um, talk to each other regularly. You have great conversations. They might think that you have a beautiful voice. Maybe you sing. Um, maybe you give them a lot of encouragement or a lot of insight. Or this might be a new connection where the two of you haven't really talked before. And they just wish that they had that access to you. Paradise, happiness, expansion, joy, playfulness, oneness, enjoying each other. They feel very positive about you. You bring a lot of joy into their lives. Um, there is this sense of being able to relax around you. The patron, mentorship, finances, and there's the air symbol on this. So you guys might work together. You might be going to school together. This might be a situation where they're like a client of yours even. Um, there is this sense of thinking about you maybe more than talking to you with the air symbol. Uh, there might even be a lot of connections with your social media. So like they might be either like looking at your feed a lot, or sorry, looking at your posts a lot, um, or I mean, honestly, you might be an influencer, you make content and you came up in their feed. I, I tend to feel like those slip ups happen for a reason. Um, they might be writing you emails because it might have something to do with work. It might be text messages, but there's a book on this card. Um, there's this sense of like, communicating with you without directly talking to you. The seven star sisters, birthing, creation, tapestry of life, expression. So, and there's the fire symbol. So they feel a lot of passion, a lot of connection, a lot of draw towards you. They feel like you're a creative person, that you are really wonderful at expressing yourself. Going back to the conversation card as well, that, that sense of you being able to articulate yourself, or maybe you're very expressive in other ways. Maybe you're really inventive with the way that you dress, or you're an actual artist, or you're a musician, and, and you're doing something that helps them to really know a lot about you. There's this sense of you really dancing with life, making your life your own. You might have a lot of friends, a lot of hobbies. There's just like a lot of depth to you. And there's this sense of you constantly reinventing yourself. And you've got um, Bonanza 10, which is beauty. So they see you as very attractive. Card number six, there is this sense of balance 
with you. Um, you guys might actually be very like similar in the way that you look or like you, when you stand next to each other, you look like a convincing couple. Like you, you like sit nicely together. Like it, there is something about the two of you both being attractive and then the partnering of the two of you amplifies that. They might also know you from the past. They might have been watching you for a while. You, maybe this is like a connection, like I said, with watching you through social media, but you might have actually known each other in the past and you've reconnected or they knew of you or they might just feel like you're very familiar. There's just this sense of um, oneness is the word that just came forward. Horsetail, card number 35, patience. That's interesting. So there, there might have been like a slow start to this connection. Maybe the two of you knew of each other, but there were other connections getting in the way. There's Venus and Saturn on this card. There might have been like this draw to each other, but when you were single, they were in a relationship. When they were single, you were in a relationship. And you've had to be patient to get to a point where the two of you could come together, and that might not have materialized yet. They are feeling like they would wait for you. Like there's this, like, there is um, a pine cone, or I'm not sure, I guess it's horsetail actually. <laughs> that makes sense, considering it's the horsetail card. <laughs> I've never, I don't think I've seen this plant in real life. It's making me think of a pine cone, which connects with the pineal gland, which is connected to the third eye. So they might have just been very psychically connected to you, like really drawn to you. And they can't put their finger on why they really like you or why they feel like this is a special connection, but they're willing to wait to figure it out. And card number, like the number 35. So three is connected to collaborations. Once again, it could be work. It could be friendships. Five is connected to conflict, which could be accounting for the fact that they've had to be patient. It can also be connected to like, physicality and being in the physical world. So maybe you're at a distance from each other and you can't physically get together. But when you reduce those two numbers, you add them together and in numerology, that's how you're going to reduce them. So that becomes the number eight. This is a year eight. I'm recording this in 2024. This is a timeless reading. So whenever you see this, it still should connect and resonate with your experience. But um, this particular year might be significant. Maybe you met in 2024, um, or maybe the number eight is significant to you on an individual level. You met in August. You met on the eighth day. Your birthday is in August, something like that. Um, but eight is all about beginnings and endings. It's talking about cycles. It can be talking about lean times, but then moving into abundance. So if this is a situation where it's been sort of like a start stop or like a slow progression towards the two of you coming together, it seems like it's all by design because Saturn teaches us lessons. So they can be really difficult and frustrating and there can be a lot of um patience that's needed in that and it can feel like you're not making any progress now i'm also being guided once again back to the horse tail and horses use their tail to um swat away flies things that are pestering them things that are bothering them so this person might have had some hot, cold energy with you, or that maybe there was like a slow start. Like maybe you knew each other, you talked to each other, but no one ever made that move because each of you were not ready, or maybe they were just not ready. They were like still getting rid of some of like the pests in their life, maybe other people, maybe their own thoughts, the things that make them feel pessimistic everything connected to Saturn energy, all of like our deepest fears and all of the things that make us feel small 
Um, it might have been contributing to the two of you not coming together. Then the destiny card, card number 10. This is the wheel of fortune. So they feel like they hit the jackpot, that this was like a destined event that was going to take place in their life. They feel lucky being around you, knowing you, or it could be that they're willing to roll the dice to see where this goes. Like, I don't get the sense that this is a connection that's been long established, but of course, each of you are on your own individual journey. It's just mainly that it feels like it wasn't just like an easy transition from we met, we started to get to know each other, we fell in love, we became exclusive, we got engaged, you know, like it wasn't that kind of like systematic growth. It seems like there's been distance or barriers or there's been like some other obstacles that have like kept you guys from really being able to just step into the being together, the being joyful, the expanding and the oneness. But they feel like, once again, they're, they're ready to wait until they get their shot at you because the the reward is so great like you're their jackpot like there's I and I get the sense that like obviously they see your physical beauty but I think that it's so much more than that going back to the mentorship and the finances like you seem to have your life together um and that doesn't mean that you're rich it doesn't mean that you have everything all sorted out it means that they see that desire in you that they see that you have a plan and you have goals and and you're working towards something and you inspire them like you teach them new things and that's really really different for them is the sense that I get that you kind of like are a breath of fresh air and it's a different way of living like there's this sense of like this angelic energy like Benzatem has the angel wings and then there is this blue streak over her eyes. So it's like you see through the BS with them. You see what they're not saying. You see through their words. And that might have been very triggering to this person initially. And maybe that's contributing to the sort of like start stop energy. Um, that might not be the case for all of you, but they really do feel like there is this ethereal nature to you. Like you see things from a higher perspective. Maybe you're really compassionate. You're really caring. You're really loving. Um, maybe you just help them to be able to be more positive about life. Maybe they were in sort of a reclusive energy before where they felt stagnant. And then the page of mirrors, the gossip. This is also making me feel like you guys haven't really stepped into a relationship together yet. There's a sense of them like asking other people about you. And the the devil on this person's shoulder is so cute and sort of mischievous. So it's like, it doesn't feel sinister. It doesn't feel like they're trying to dig up dirt on you. This feels more like they are trying to ask questions possibly of like, acquaintances. There are people that know you and they're trying to sort of get information about like, are you single? How long have you been single? Are you looking for someone? What's your type? You know, like all of those kinds of things. They might even be trying to figure out information from you. So they might be asking you certain questions and they're trying to like figure out how old you are or like, you know, when was your last relationship? And they're, they're not coming out and just asking you like, oh, you know, how old are you? They're asking you like, oh, when did you graduate from high school? Obviously, they're going to figure out how old you are from that. Like there's this sense of like trying to get info, intel about you without revealing their cards. Like they, they want to have a shot with you, but they're also a little bit afraid about you shooting them down. <laughs> Oh, that's really cute. Okay, let's get some more cards to just sort of clarify um, some of these cards that are a little more confusing. So let's start with the gossip card. I 
Let's find out if there's anything else. Oh, happiness. Yes, it's positive stuff. They are trying to figure out like, what are your likes and dislikes? And, and maybe it's like sort of preparing to ask you out on a date. Or maybe you guys are already together and they're really good at figuring out, you know, how to surprise you. Like they plant little questions or they mine you for information and you have no idea that they're actually planning a surprise party for you or a surprise vacation. They, they're seeking to make you happy. And there's this feels different for them. Like maybe in the past they were not the best partner. It feels to me like they've had some soul growth and now they're at a place where they realize that to be happy in a relationship, it's not just about the partner that you pick, it's the energy you put into the relationship, right? Like there's this, there's a canary on here and I just keep hearing canary in the coal mine. Like there might've been situations in their past relationship where there were clear signs that things were going south, that, that there was toxicity, there was poison. Like, I don't know if you, maybe you guys don't know what a, that saying means the canary in the coal mine. So in the past, coal miners would have to carry caged canaries into the mines with them because they didn't have the technology to be able to measure the, the noxious gases that were in the mine with them. So they would carry the bird with them. And when the bird died, they knew they needed to get out of the mine, right? Because if the bird is dead, they're also inhaling whatever killed the bird. So there's this sense of like, they didn't notice that the bird had died and they just kept going about whatever they were doing in the relationship, not trying to correct the situation. And then the relationship died and they're like, what? I didn't know there was anything wrong. And now they're like, not gonna take any risk because it's like, you're the reward that they were waiting for. Like, so there's obviously things about you that were like, connected with their ideal partner. Like maybe you guys have a lot in common. Maybe you're just really great at, I mean, it's likely a combination. It's like you have a lot in common or you have interests that they find really intriguing and you bring newness to their life and you're really attractive and you're really compassionate and you really know how to communicate. Like it's like the things about you that they like just keep stacking up and stacking up and stacking up. Um, okay, so let's get more cards. What can you tell me about the patron? Great gratitude. Yeah, there's something about the way that you look at life. You look at things through the cup being half full. You might not feel that way, but this is the way the other person sees it. So they are seeing you recognizing the small things. Oh my God. Okay, so you know, going back to the canary and the coal mine, this woman is surrounded by birds. You notice everything. You likely have intuitive abilities. You are noticing when things are going off the rails in possibly many different situations in your life and you're a problem solver. Like you're not waiting until everything is like, at a stage of disaster before you start trying to course correct. Like you're noticing things and you're you're cultivating the relationship as you go. This isn't a situation where your partner is ever gonna feel like you don't love them or you don't support them, you don't have their back. Like you, at some point in time, because most people are not born this way, um, they don't have all of these skills right from the jump. I'm actually being corrected by spirit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We all are born with the ability to have unconditional love and through um, the compromises that we have to make on a personal level to fit into our community and fit into our family of origin um, and the influences of society as a whole, we get corrupted and we lose some of those techniques and, and that openness. Um, but a lot of the skill set that we need to be able to hold space for that unconditional love and work within a society that really upholds like individualism, that's a learned skill. 
And you have learned how to do that to some degree, maybe not in all areas of your life, but you don't sweat the small stuff and you notice the blessings that are tiny. Like when your partner, you know, just picks up a coffee for you, you don't just like, you know, accept it and say, oh, thanks. And then it's out of your mind. Like you really like appreciate that. And you might not like go overboard thanking them profusely, but like they know that you appreciate those small acts and then they want to do it even more. And, and it seems like there's reciprocity in that way, like that you appreciate what they are doing for you and it makes them want to do it even more. And they appreciate what you're doing for them and then you want to do it even more. And if this is a new connection or you haven't really come into union yet, this is a situation where this person is noticing this behavior in the dynamics between you and your friends or your family. They're noticing that you have this tendency and they love that. That's one of the reasons why they want to get closer to you. They see you as unique. And honestly, that is a unique skill. Most people are really individually focused and it's no one's fault per se. It's like we are programmed to behave that way for various reasons. But I think that you understand that to be happy, it's not about prestige. It's not about like all the things you own and impressing other people. It's like choosing happiness through little moments on a day-to-day -day basis that is so beautiful okay let's find out about the wheel of fortune the destiny card kindred partnership yes this person sees you as the total package the complete blessing that this was a destined event and i've talked about this in other readings before I always like to clarify this because I see this being muddled and confused in so many readings. There is a difference between a fated event and a destined event. A fated event is something that's going to happen in your life no matter what. It doesn't matter what you do or say. It's going to unfold exactly as it's meant to. Somebody passing away, for example, is a fated event. You could not have done anything to stop that. But a destined event is something that is going to come into your life based on the choices that you make. They recognize that by doing the work, they've gotten to a place where they could potentially be your partner. And the only way that you elevated yourself to this like high caliber quality partner is by also equally doing the work. There's like a kindred nature between the two of you. And I always refer to these kind of partnerships as divine counterparts because it is two people that are equally healed. It doesn't mean you're perfect. No one's perfect, but that's a, a myth. You're never going to be perfect because you're human and that doesn't exist here. But um, you have done the work to try and Face your own fears and your vulnerabilities so that you can show up as a supportive partner, so that you can work together as a team, so the two of you are on equal footing. And, you know, dynamics like karmic relationships and twin flames, which is, you know, something entirely different, don't have that kind of foundational stability. So this person is really seeing you as balance both physically and emotionally you bring so much joy into their life you're like a guiding light there's a lighthouse on the island out here like they might have felt kind of isolated and alone or like that people didn't really understand them um and you get them like you make them feel less like different less alone in the world okay let's get some more cards um, okay. Oh my God. The ace of pentacles. So they want to build something with you in the physical world. Pen pentacles are all about like physical matter. So it is like you, one, being in a committed relationship, um, having that partnership and that title and everyone around you knows that you're in this relationship, but it's also about like 
building all of your prosperity together. Maybe you move in together. Maybe you buy a house, you buy a car, you have children, you get married, like whatever it is, everyone wants different things, but it's like literally like partnering and pulling your resources together to amplify your own experience. Um, if this is something that hasn't occurred, they're definitely, you know, imagining that. Um, there's the there's all these bubbles on the card. So there is this sense that maybe for some of them, it's still sort of like daydreams. But for many of you, you might actually be in a committed relationship or marriage with this person. Queen of Pentacles. They're very enamored with you and your stability. There's just this like sense that you really know who you are and you're building something that is fruitful, something that is abundant, and you've worked hard on this. Like you put in the time that's needed to achieve the things that you want. Um, and they are just really impressed by that. What else can you tell me about how her? Seven of Wands. So you um, know how to hold your position you likely know how to have boundaries, but there's this sense of, with the imagery on this card, the way that the individuals are interacting, it's like you have boundaries that are not aggressive. You know, people can have boundaries and be like overly assertive about their boundaries, and that can seem like it's a little bit closed off to some individuals, Whereas you can have boundaries and do it with compassion and love, like, like telling someone, you know, um, you're, I like love everything that you're talking about right now. I want to be able to dedicate the right amount of attention to the things that you're sharing with me. So can we talk about this tomorrow? Because there's some things that are happening right now that are really distracting me. And I really want to be able to completely focus on everything that you're sharing. That's a boundaries. That's saying I can't talk right now, but what you're saying to me is really important. So you, um, like are redirecting to another time. Like that's a learned skill as well. Like obviously you are skilled. Like I just heard master. So you've mastered some aspects of the human experience, especially like interactions with people. How does pile number two person feel about them? Two of swords. Interesting. I want to clarify this card. So the two of swords can be talking about being at a crossroads, um, trying to make a decision. Um, there might be some conversations that are going on between the two of you about what your next steps are. This might be, and this is just for some of you, but this is coming forward. Some of you might be trying to decide if you want to expand on your family and and you don't know if, like how, like there's a sense of negotiation. It's just more about the imagery. Again, like these two people are sort of cradling this rose at waist level. And it's giving me this pregnancy energy. Like they are like, is this something that we want to do together? It doesn't feel like conflicted, but let's get some clarifiers. Oh, okay. Change the deck. Can you please clarify the two of swords? The moon. The moon can also be a card about pregnancy. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. And there's rabbits all over this card, which can also be talking about fertility. Okay, so obviously that's a conversation that's happening for some of you. But the rest of you, this can be talking about there still being things that they're uncertain about. They don't know how you feel about them. They don't know how to approach you. They don't know how to impress you. And and you might be thinking, they've already impressed me, like just make a move. Because there's a sense of it sort of like not taking more time than it needs to. But everything is in divine timing and there's this real sense of this probably being the right person for you. I mean, at least that's how they feel about you. They feel like you're the right person for them. And 
it really is up to you how you, you know, want to approach this. Like, do you feel the same about them? Like, that's something that you're going to need to, to think about because from what I can see, this person is really accepting you for you and they seem to have their priorities straight. What else can you tell me about how pile number two's person feels about them? Okay. Change. Let's change because nothing else wants to come out of that one. <laughs> oh my God, these cards came out in the previous pile. So some of you guys might be coming from uh, pile number one. But choice and order. So the choice also connects back to the two of swords. Justice, this could be talking about feeling a sense of this being like, uh, like destiny. That this is like the reward for the pain and the growth that happened as a result of other previous connections. The heartaches that you've endured. Um, this could be them feeling like they're not certain if you're going to choose them. Now, it could be the reverse of that. You might have already picked them and they're sort of like unsure for various reasons. They're sort of like so enamored and so impressed with you and still unwilling to make a move. Um, the order card has the moon and Virgo on it. It could be talking about them feeling like they don't have everything in order. Like they don't, they're not on your level. They're not worthy of you. Like they, they feel like they're not making enough income or they haven't like organized their life to a point where they deserve you. Or maybe they feel like you still have some of those things to do. There's this sense of illusion though, and they might still need to be working through some of their perceptions about, um, like, the way that we are accepted by the general population. There's like Virgo can be connected to um, like our image and how we present and how we sell ourselves. And it can be strongly connected to beauty. It can also be connected to sort of like this nitpicky energy. And I'm not picking on Virgos. I am a Virgo. I'm a Virgo son. So I know this energy really, really well. But this could potentially be barring you from having a great connection with someone that could potentially help you get over this and that could be like this energy might resonate with how you're feeling this might be mirroring how you view their thoughts and feelings but there's this sense of a choice needs to be made and there's too much focus on the illusions and like what could go wrong or what the other person is feeling and i think you know honestly doing a lot of these readings too many people are in their head about these kinds of connections and wanting a guarantee. And that's just not the way life works. Like you cannot walk through life guarding your heart and never being hurt in love and actually having loving experiences. Love is a risk, you know, and you just have to jump in and hope for the best and bring your best self into it. And maybe you will experience the perfection of love, that divine image that you have in your mind, maybe you'll have your heart broken, but you'll learn so much from it. And you'll become a better partner to the next person. You know, like it, it just is the, the way that dynamics work because ultimately we're not here to just experience joy. This whole existence, being on earth, being embodied, is about duality, right? It's all about the light and the shadow. So you will experience joy, but you'll also experience pain. And maybe that's something you already know, and maybe it's something you don't. But like, this is what seemingly sort of barring the connection, but overall, this is really positive. So I just wanna get um, some final piece of advice for you, pile number two about this connection. Okay, 
So first, these cards have angel numbers on them. So you might see these repeating digits. Um, you may have already, or you might see them in the future. So the first card is 2323, Endless Cycles. Charisma, communication, society, movement, journey, repetition, circumstances, and patterns. There's some truth you're resistant to accept over and over again until you're tired and restrained beyond depression. It takes a decision to live life for yourself. Life is all about passion. When you make a change, the world around you follows. So this might be a situation where this person is the perfect person for you and you're not seeing it because you um, are still sort of focused on the things that you had on your checklist for your perfect partner that they don't embody. Maybe they don't embody them at all because it's like, you know, physically they're not your type or something. Um, or these are things that they're still working on, right? But there's this sense of you maybe potentially missing a good thing because it's you're not looking at the partnership through the right lens you know like you're you're kind of on this path of potentially repeating karmic lessons and that does not mean punishment I don't that's not how I see karma at all um karma is connected to growth so, you know, if you're having trouble just working through a problem in your mind, you will have experiential learning. So there is this sense of there's a journey happening, there's movement happening. But if you can start to follow your own passions, make decisions for yourself, you can end this cycle and in, move into something positive. So 8888 is the other card that's come out personal power material and spiritual abundance wealth resources force balance confidence material gain epic romance all that is good and pleasant in your life will multiply angels are sending the number to reassure you of the prosperity and well-being ahead your surroundings will treat yeah your surroundings will treat you with admiration and respect Use it for the greater good. So if you're feeling like, oh, well, I don't know. Maybe this person's too different from me. Maybe they don't have enough resources. Maybe they aren't as established as I want them to be. There is something about you underestimating how great they are. That you're looking at them through a particular lens and not seeing this gift for what it is. Like, know that that's also how the universe works like <laughs> you know like how many times have people um missed out on opportunities only in hindsight to look back and think shoot why did i let that go right don't let this be one of those opportunities that passes you by only for you to realize that you could have had happiness you know years to possibly decades sooner if you had just recognized you know the gem that was in front of you maybe it's an uncut gem and you are going to go through a process of cutting those facets in the diamond so it has the brilliance there's a sense of like don't underestimate what kind of quality partner this could be to you because they aren't that finished stone yet because they have that vision of you that would really balance you out and provide you with the kind of support you need to live the very best life that you possibly could so that concludes your reading pile number two i hope you enjoyed it i would love to know your thoughts i love you know, hearing from you guys, getting feedback is so, so special to me. I know I don't always respond, but sometimes life takes over, but I read every single comment that you guys send me. Um, and I would love for you guys to join the channel when you like a video, when you subscribe to the channel, it really helps with the growth of the channel and it makes it easier for me to still continue to 
deliver content for you. So if you could do that for me, that would be so appreciated. And as I mentioned earlier, I do do personal readings. So if any of you guys would like a reading, go to my website, odessamall.com, and you'll be able to see all of my services there. So have a wonderful day or night, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next reading. Take care. Hi, pile number three, welcome back. So you picked the purple flowers and the clear quartz points. So I'm just gonna put these items over here and maybe they will come forward during the reading, but I'm gonna focus on the cards first and we'll see whether they um, connect in some way to your reading. And for those of you who missed the intro, this is a reading all about you and your person. I'm going to be revealing to you how your person feels about you. But remember that this is a collective reading. So some of the messages will be for you and some of them won't. So just listen to your heart, what feels right to you, take that on. And if it feels wrong, just leave it behind because it's likely for somebody else. And if you do want a personal reading, I do do private personal readings. You can go to my website, odessamall.com, and I can give you a reading that is custom tailored to you. And all of the messages will be specifically for you and about your circumstances. So let's get into these cards and find out how your person feels about you. So the first card you received is chemistry. I have never felt a passion this intense. Well, that's a nice start. So they feel a lot of desire for you. Um, you know, it's possible that the two of you are just starting to connect. Maybe this is a long-standing relationship. Maybe this is something that hasn't quite got off the ground yet, but they are definitely feeling that strong chemistry. Acts, breakup, separation, stop the pattern, silent treatment, abandonment. So this could mean that you guys are in a breakup or there's separation of some kind at this particular point in time. This could also be connected to someone else, right? Maybe they are lusting after you from a distance and you just got out of another relationship and you're like getting over the breakup. There's this sense of there being an end to an ongoing pattern, but we'll see what the rest of the cards say. The musician, inspiration and gratitude. So they definitely feel like you bring something that's very romantic out of them. There's this sense of like emotions coming forward that they might have never felt with another person. They might be a musician. You might be a musician. They might have actually written songs for you. Or you might be having, maybe they sent you a song and, and said, you got to listen to this, or this reminds me of you. Or there might be synchronicities that are happening for you that are connected to music. A lot of people that have clear audience will just have like an earworm, right? Like a song pops into your head and it just repeats, repeats, repeats. And that can be spiritual communication. It can be like a sign from your person like they are um telepathically sort of like planting that you know message in your mind or it's coming from spirit and you have to like sort of listen to the lyrics of the song to get the message um you know all in moderation though like when I give these examples don't build the relationship just based on you know, those spiritual signs, there has to be more to it than that. But I like to share all insight that I get when I look at a card. They do feel very grateful to know you and they're so happy that you came into their life. There's still this sense of like distance or illusion. Um, like with the moon on this card and there's all this imagery of water, they might just feel like sort of lost in their own emotions and maybe they are feeling just very creative. They're like, you've reignited some other passions in their life. 
lifting the veil, questioning everything, anything unaligned must go. Wow, you have just blown this person's mind. I don't know what you've done, but maybe you're just very different or maybe you're getting them to look at life in a new way. Maybe this person is going through like a spiritual awakening. Like, and when I say that, I mean that they are shifting and changing their view of life. They're looking at themselves differently. They're asking themselves deeper questions. Not everything is so surface level any longer. They're looking behind people's words. They're looking at what the true intent is, what the motivation is. And maybe this is something that you've really opened them up to. Maybe you're more in tune with the things that really matter in life, you know, and it, like personal connections with people, like the the environment, like embracing and, and enjoying just the simple things, walking outside on a sunny day and seeing flowers in bloom. Like there's this, this sense that you may be a little more cosmic, Obviously, you're likely more spiritual because you are watching the pick a card reading. So <laughs> there is a good chance that you already resonate with a lot of the spiritual viewpoints about our connection with the earth. And that's just completely shifting the way they see everything in their life. Um, Ishtar communion card number 24. Wow. Oh my God. So Ishtar, such a powerful goddess, just regardless of how you identify, you are a very powerful person. You know who you are. You shine from the inside out. This is a situation where I think that you may have really come into this person's life in a really unexpected way. They didn't anticipate meeting you, or maybe they knew they were going to meet you, but they didn't expect that you would be you, you know, that you would be so unique and different and that they would be so drawn to you. Um, I, I think that many people are drawn to you. And I get the sense that they just instantly started like thinking about you in terms of being their partner. Like there's this sense of, for some of you, that they instantly knew you're the one. Now that lots of people get that feeling and it doesn't necessarily mean that that person is the one. It just means that that person is significant. It could mean that that person has a lot of qualities that are going to, you know, be beneficial in your life because I, I don't necessarily think that there is just one person that is meant for you because every single person on the planet is evolving and growing and you would be at risk of being really unhappy in your relationships and like love in general if there was only one person that you were destined to be with on the planet and that person decides to never do any of the work to grow to be worthy of your partnership, right? Because everyone has free will. If it was all faded, like everything is going to unfold a certain way, you wouldn't have free will and that would be a disservice to you as well. So know that there's lots of opportunities for love. You're looking for the right combination of ingredients that will help, you know, benefit your life. Add a little flavor, maybe add a little balance, you know, like it, it's just... A matter of you figuring out who you are first and then you will start to recognize what you're seeking in the other people and it makes it easier to choose the right partner for yourself you have to go beyond just the superficial and it feels like this person is is going through that I don't think that they were like they're all the way there like I do get the sense that they were attracted to you because they likely think that you're really attractive very powerful. You have a lot of confidence. You really know where you're going in life. And that doesn't mean that you've achieved any of those things. It just means that you have a vision and you have like, you're going to go after those things, even if it's scary, even if you're taking a risk to a certain degree. And there's this sense of reciprocity that you bring to the table that you know that 
You have to bring as much to the table as you expect the other person to. You know also that there's like something that might have to be sacrificed. Like you really understand that, you know, the, the cycles of death and rebirth that in order for you to have renewal, you have to let go of the past. So if you want to have a fresh start in a relationship with a new person, you have to cut ties with your ex and you have to get over whatever it was that happened in the past. You can't drag that along with you. You understand that. And I'm noticing that there's a key on the necklace that Ishtar is wearing. Like you, um, and there's bones all around her neck. And, and so there's this sense of like, you've been through the battle, like, but it's not something that's negative. It's like, you're an empowered warrior. Yes, I've seen pain. Yes, I've seen destruction. But I hold those lessons close to my heart because they helped me to evolve to who I am now. And that opened the door for me to see my own light. And that's why you shine so bright. Wow, I'm really impressed with you, pile number three. Then you received Valerian acceptance, card number 44. And there's an illuminated body in a rain cloud with all of this thunder and lightning underneath the person's silhouette. And it's like they're controlling this storm, which is very um, Zeus-like energy. Like this is, and Neptune's on this card, and Valerian root is a very soothing um, herb that can help lull us to sleep. Um, you know how to weather the storm. You know how to look past illusions. There's a rat on this card. Rats can be associated with people trying to deceive us or gnawing away at our confidence or being sneaky. You see past all of that and you do not allow other people's shortcomings or their judgments of you to make you feel smaller. You know that everyone is working through their own thing and you just accept that, right? You, you create balance in your own life. 44, the number four is all about that solid foundation. But four plus four is eight abundance, but also death and rebirth. And then of course, this is, I'm recording this in 2024, which is year eight. So this year might be significant for the two of you. This is a timeless reading. So whenever you listen to this, it doesn't matter what year it is, but the numbers that are coming forward are indicating something about your connection. They feel like you accept them. They definitely are accepting of you. Then the bachelor, this is the emperor card and it's card number four. Wow. There's so much foundational energy that's coming forward. They see you as their foundation. Now the emperor can be an individual who is very accomplished, has succeeded in the material world, but they can also be an individual who is a little bit cut off from their emotions. They can be very rooted in the logical mind. Not that they don't have emotions, obviously they do because the emperor is the embodiment of all four kings and every king symbolizes a different aspect of our human psyche. So it like the cups are connected to the emotions, the wands are connected to our passion, our creativity, our fire, our drive, our impulsiveness. The swords are connected to our logic, our ability to problem solve, our ability to communicate, um, and then what is, what is the other swords, cups, wands, pentacles, pentacles are, <laughs> that's so funny. I forgot that, but the pentacles are connected to everything that's in the physical world, all the physical matter, the things that we are accumulating and creating. So the emperor is a master of all of those different realms, but it, the emperor is more embodied in the divine masculine energy and the empress is more divine feminine. So it can be rooted more in logical thinking, less in the emotional thinking. So you might not be allowing yourself to receive. You might not be allowing yourself to surrender. You might be so independent 
that there is a separation between the two of you. Like you will let this person in. Like you see that they are accepting of you, that they're grateful for you, that they have passion for you, that, you know, they, um, and there's this sense that they're lifting the veil for you as well. Like this might be sort of mirrored energy. Like this might, when I'm explaining all of this, um, the two of you might be very skilled and very advanced in different realms. Like I'm noticing on this lifting the veil card that there is this alien spacecraft that seems to have some sort of tractor beam. Like they might be very different from you and they are sort of, you know, illuminating the way that you see things as well. But it's like, you feel like they're pulling you They're They're, I don't know, like, I feel like in a way that you're sort of attracted to them, but you're reluctant and you don't necessarily want to move towards them. There's like a fear of losing yourself. There's like a fear of if I get into this, I might no law, I might lose myself. I won't know. I won't be this independent person. I won't be able to be able to live my life the same way. I'll lose my power. I won't be able to, there's also, some of you might be very spiritually gifted because I keep hearing, I won't be able to commune the same way I did. Maybe that means that you're just, you just want to be able to hang out with your friends or maybe there's multiple people that you're sort of connecting with on a romantic level and you won't be able to hang out with them or connect with them in some way. This might be you feeling like you're going to be so distracted by the relationship that you won't even be able to connect with your spiritual side any longer. Let's get more cards. We need clarification on them. Okay, so can I please get clarification on the lifting the veil card? Anything unaligned must go. Okay, so this is pretty intense energy. So it's hard to fly off. Oh my God, yes. There is something about this spiritual connection and there's something beyond just what you have physically experienced. There's like a connection that seems astral. Like, I don't know, maybe they've come forward in your dreams. Maybe you have nightmares about them. You got the spirit guide card is the reason why I am saying that. And then answers and Odin is on this card. Um, so Odin, uh, primary deity in North Miss Norse mythology, um, wise elder, delivering answers and guidance, helping us to see things in a new way. And, and sometimes that guidance is seeing ourselves in a new way. And sometimes the reflection that we see, we don't necessarily like, right? Because we are rejecting those aspects of ourselves that, you know, we don't feel as proud of. Um, you got the forgiveness card as well. So you know, it's possible that you have helped them to see themselves in a new way and they are starting to answer for some of the things that maybe were not in like, not really true to the best version of themselves. Maybe like they said the wrong thing or they hurt people and, and you know, they're processing some of that pain now. Um, there might be some sort of conflict that happened between the two of you and they are asking for forgiveness. You know, maybe they are answering, they're aware of how they hurt you. It could, the, the roles could be reversed as well. It, it might be a situation where, um, you know, they are ready to, forgive you and potentially stop this pattern of silent treatment because they're recognizing all of the beautiful aspects of you and you know their own intuition is saying this person wasn't wrong or like whatever it is like it's almost like you triggered them so then they walked away from you or maybe they triggered you and you walked away from them and you thought, oh, I, I'm just going to get rid of this person. But once you're changed, you're changed for good. <laughs> like there's no going back. You can't just like, you know, pretend, oh, I don't know that any longer. It's like once you're 
awake and aware of the truth of, you know, energies or circumstances or people around you, you know, there's no, you know, erasing that. Like it just, it is what it is. So let's get some more cards on this. Okay. So let's find out some more about the act, the breakup separation. Some clarification. The loving man. So this person might be um, a loving man towards you and joyous fun. This card actually came out in another pile. You might be watching multiple piles. Um, oh, no, 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 no. That's too many. That's too many. That was like five cards. Let's try. Try this again. Clarify the axe card, please. Okay, and clarify the forgiveness card. Okay, so with the separation, the axe card, the loving man was one of the cards that came out, as I mentioned, joyous, fun, then travel, and teacher. There's this sense of maybe in your absence, they've learned a lot about themselves they've traveled within maybe they've literally gone on a trip um maybe they've seen you go on a trip maybe they've seen you walk away maybe they've seen other people having fun with you and appreciating you and they're realizing just how amazing you are there's this sense of like you challenged them you challenged them and that made them fearful but now they're in, in acceptance of this. Now they're ready to have courage. Now they're ready to move towards you. And once again, I mean, it could be the reverse. There's just this sense of like the two of you came together. Maybe you were ready for what you were going to have to actually face. You had this idea or notion that, you know, you wanted to have this passionate, loving romance, not realizing that everything else that comes along with that, you can meet the perfect person. And that means that everything else that's unaligned must go. All of your shadows, all of the things that could destroy this relationship will bubble up to the surface. You're going to be pointing all of these things out to each other inadvertently. Oftentimes we trigger people and we don't, we don't know that we said the wrong thing because they aren't sharing all of their deepest wounds, especially if like you just started dating this person and they don't like feel comfortable sharing a lot of that with you. And there's this sense of they are finally at a place where they realize, oh, okay, I get it. These are things that I have to work through and it's not about getting rid of the person it's getting rid of all of those wounds because no matter who I'm with I'm going to continually be triggered or they see that you've gone through that kind of that kind of growth that kind of evolution and, and they're seeing you in a different light and this might not be a situation where the two of you are meant to be together obviously I'm going to pull more cards and we're going to see a little bit more about how this person is feeling but you know this could be a situation where it's more along the lines of like a twin flame or a karmic connection where two people are learning and growing from a relationship and you aren't necessarily healed to the point where you're able to be together one or, or both of you are like that and you learn so much from the relationship that now you are ready for the right union. Now you're able to step in. Like they might be like, that's the overall sense that I get. Like they have so much love for you now. And it's only after they've taken a step back and assessed what happened in the relationship and realized that you were right. And now they appreciate you for who you are. Even though they saw that strength in you before, now they're really understanding it. And they want what's best for you. They, of course, they would love to be able to come back into your life. That's definitely coming through. But if they don't have access to you again, they want what's best for you. And, you know, again, it, it could be the reverse of that. It, I mean, you, you might be the person that 
needs to sort of adjust and see, like let down your guard a little bit and allow this person in. Um, you know, maybe too much strength has created a lot of strong barriers around you that will never let any kind of love in. Like there is such a thing as being too independent to the point where it becomes like this cage and it's, it's no longer a protective measure. Like you don't know how to get out of it. So you're in your own prison. All right. So let's get the Knight of Wands. They want to come towards you. They have passion for you. They want to come towards you. They um, want to have some sort of physical intimacy with you is the sense that I get. How does pile number three's person feel about them? Um, the Knight of Pentacles and the Magician. They definitely want something in the physical world. They're trying to manifest this. I want to get clarification on the Magician though. Okay, clarity on the Magician, please. The star. Yeah, they're finally seeing you for the wish fulfillment that you always were. Um, there, there might be some things that are going on in your life that are allowing you to really take off. This might be a situation where, you know, you don't know what you've got until it's gone. And then you turn around and you realize that uh, a whole bunch of other people knew exactly who you were and weren't going to squander that opportunity. Like you're shining. Maybe this is like your career took off. Maybe you're being celebrated by friends. Maybe you're in a new relationship, but there's like this sense of you really like showing yourself. And on the star card, there's this, I don't know. It looks like a princess with a tiny little dog. Maybe it's a cat. I'm not sure with her pet, with her familiar playing the piano and the musician came forward before. So maybe you are creating the art or you're, you know, creating the music, the you're speaking your truth. There's your voice is out there. But of course, music can also be talking about your vibration, which is just, you know, your core beliefs about self, like behind everything. What, how do you really see yourself? That's your vibrational frequency. Uh, okay, let's get some more cards. How this six of wands, there's, this is the victory card. They are seeing you being celebrated, being victorious, other people looking at you and seeing what they didn't see. And to a certain degree, they might be a little bit disgruntled or they were is the sense I get. Like initially they might've been like, oh, that, oh man, I hate this kind of energy, but okay, I'll share it with you. <sighs> okay, so it's this energy of, well, why didn't they have a glow up when we were together? But that's morphed, that's morphed and changed. Now they're realizing, well, maybe you were feeling depleted because you had to give so much. Like maybe they were taking more or maybe they cut you down. Like sometimes powerful people like yourself, you know, intimidate even their partners and then their partner slowly chips away at who they authentically are. And then, you know, you exit the relationship and your natural energy comes back and you just buoy up. It's like, you know, a, a balloon tied down underneath the surface of the water. You cut that anchor and it just jetties up to the top like it just like skyrockets up to the top and that's what happened and they're like angry about that but I feel like they're more in acceptance now now they're like more proud of you egotism yeah they were jealous there's Mars and Leo it's like why can't I shine why can't I be the star I don't know like maybe some of you are women and you're dating men who haven't really gotten to a place of their own, you know, comfort in their own masculinity, masculinity, their own confidence in their self. I say that because Mars is often associated with masculine energy and so is the sun. So it's like, wait a minute, you're not supposed to be the star. I'm supposed to be the star. Everything is supposed to be like rotating around me. I'm the center of my own world. I'm the sun. And it's like, you might have 
tried to work with this person and then all of a sudden you realize like, no, there's no working through this. It was just conflict, conflict, conflict. So you separated from them. What else can you tell me about this situation? Yeah, assertion. Like they wanted to dominate and control you more. Aries and the sun. And it's card number one. They put themselves first and they, they were not your ally. They were your competition. They were not trying to work with you. It's like they want, they, it, this is purely because they didn't feel good about themselves. This is like, they were, I, I hate to say this, but this is what came forward. They were punching above their weight. Like they always felt like you were out of their league. Now in reality, if they just stepped into who they really are, they wouldn't have been beneath you or whatever. But they were, you know, perceiving you as being above them. And then they acted accordingly, initially trying to win you over and impress you. And then when that sort of mask couldn't be held up any longer and they had to actually get vulnerable in the relationship, they, you know, started acting out and being maybe more dismissive, maybe more, you know, just hostile to you in some way. Yes. Oh my God. Flattery, Venus, Gemini, card number three. They might have had their head turned looking at other people. Maybe they were constantly playing devil's advocate. Maybe they were trying to gaslight you. Maybe they were just like, could not see, like the figures on this, this decapitated head, like just blank, empty eyes. Like they couldn't see you for who you really were. They were looking away from you at what everyone else is thinking of them. How, how is everyone else seeing me? Instead of what you were doing, which was looking at them with stars in your eyes. I see your light and they were not meeting your gaze. This makes me sad. <laughs> um, okay, devotion and resistance. So we've got Saturn, Taurus, Mercury, um, card number two, card number seven. They resisted, they were stubborn. You were this beautiful bird of paradise and they wanted to clip your wings. Like, yeah, you can be beautiful, but you can't fly anywhere. We, I don't want you to do any of the stuff that you were doing before that made you this beautiful free spirit. I wanna control you. I wanna know exactly what the outcome is gonna be. I wanna, and I don't wanna be like, going into these other realms like this looking at things from a spiritual perspective or looking at things from you know artistic point of view no i want everything to be practical i want to be able to have a guarantee and then they lost you and now <laughs> then they lost you and now they are really feeling that loss now, like you've permanently shifted them. You changed them. I don't know if you realize that, but you really did. And now they not only are feeling that devotion towards you, but they're really feeling like they messed up, that you're the one that got away. So let's get some final cards. This is final advice from Spirit for you guys. So what would you like pile number three to know? Okay, so these cards are um, oracle cards with, oh, you've got three. Okay, so there are angel numbers on these cards. So you might be seeing these numerological, numerological sequences in your day-to-day -day life, maybe in the past, maybe in the future. So the first one is 1818, willpower. Achievement, success, striving, Forward prosperity, go-getter, courage, luck. Wow, significant events are on the cards for you. You will progress in your endeavors and gain new experiences. The right people and resources will be put on your path. An excellent proposal or change is coming up. You're destined for greatness. Do not feel like you lost something with this person. Like, of course you did lose the connection with them if you are truly in separation from this person. But the overall sense that I get is that this might've been more of a karmic lesson. And I think that you might've been the teacher in this situation. Like you had the higher perspective, the higher level education about spiritual 
concepts as well as like emotional maturity and how to show up in a relationship. And we can have to play those roles, right? Like you can um, go in as the student and you can go in as the teacher. So, and sometimes you're both simultaneously. Like you definitely learn something from this, but don't feel like you lost out on an opportunity. And I don't necessarily think it would be wise for you to backtrack like keep moving forward. Keep hustling is what I just heard. Okay, so next, um, nine, 99, 99, lesson learned. You see, karmic, karmic. Culmination, results, benefits, reflection, completion. Take stock of your accomplishments and how you arrive at them. This is a reminder to remain optimistic and dr drive towards your goals. Maintain your momentum and know that the powers of heaven have your back. You made it and the reward goes to you. So you played this out right. You chose yourself. You might have gone back and forth a little bit. That's totally okay. You know, like we're not looking for perfection. We're, we're looking for growth. So, you know, taking um, three steps forward and taking one step back only to take another two steps forward ultimately is still forward progression, right? Ultimately, it's still allowing you to take that one extra step forward. So it's okay. However, you ended up where you are now, you've learned the lesson, closed the cycle, allow this person to leave your life because there are greater things on the horizon for you. And honestly, this person is not ready for you. Then final card, two, 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 alignment, connections, friendships, romantic relationships, family ties, balance, life choices, compromise, commitment, trust. How do you move forward toward your life's true calling? Do what makes you happy. Your enthusiasm is what keeps you going. Follow your interest. If it's piqued by something, follow these route, following these routes will help you discover your life's purpose. That is what this is all about. You need to keep moving towards the things that fill your cup, that make you feel whole, that make you feel happy. Because if you continue to look backwards, you will drag that energy into the present because you are constantly manifesting despite what many different spiritual teachers and thought leaders and people will say, there's never a point in time when you're not manifesting. Your thoughts, words, and actions are co-creating with the universe at all times. So you have to not only think about what you want, you have to speak about what you want to yourself predominantly, but also to the universe. You know, you can send out prayers, talk about what you want to other people if that helps you. Hopefully these are people that are supportive, talking to people that are going to gaslight you and make you want to go back to what you already walked away from is not going to help you with planting those seeds. And then you have to take action. That's the most important step. You have to ha have to actually take steps. The universe is only going to do so much. We have this perception that certain events are just going to unfold because they are meant to be, but there are fate and destiny in our life. Fate are those events that are going to happen no matter what. And they're rare because you have free will. Fated events are like catastrophes that happen on a global scale or someone passing away. Like meeting your perfect partner is not a fated event because you're here to learn lessons and grow. It's a destined event, which means that you have to take steps to align yourself with that. So this person is not ready. Like they are starting to see your light, but there's too much risk here. Like you would end up potentially sliding back into an old cycle. Keep moving forward because there are other people, despite what you might think at this point in time, that are doing the work. And like you, they have ascended to a certain point where they could actually meet your energy and they have had similar past experiences. They also 
have to cut ties. You know, some of these people might be watching this same reading. I'm telling you, all the people in this pile, you're watching this reading, you need to be partnering with each other. Get rid of the people that you're thinking about. Those people are not ready for you. They can go and deal with some of the other piles and the advice that I gave in those other piles. You guys need to start looking for each other and that's what's gonna bring you happiness. So I hope you enjoyed this reading. This was such a pleasure. I would love to know your thoughts on the reading. I love reading your comments. I'm not always able to comment back. I try and comment as to as many of you as I possibly can, but I read all of your comments and they make me feel so happy to know that you guys like the readings or like the suggestions you guys make are always so helpful. I would love it if you guys liked the video. Of course, if it resonated, um, you know, do what you will. Like, I, I don't want to put any pressure on you, but it would also be amazing if you subscribe to the channel. It helps my channel grow and that makes it easier for me to deliver more content to you. And as I mentioned before, if any of you are interested in a personal reading, I do offer those as well as a number of other services. Go to my website, odessamall.com. You can learn more. I am sending you so much love. I look forward to seeing you in the next reading. Take care.